Hey dear viewer, welcome to episode 12, which also happens to be my squad number at Club Rouge. Let's start this episode with a Raxi. And I almost got 12 kills there. Now that would have fit the episode. But sadly, I got 11 kills. And look at all those herbs. They're so lovely. Hydrix bolts and coins as well, those are nice. And then there's this Triskelion fragment. I'm missing an exclusive drop though. It's been a while, but I finally got an elite clue from the Dwarven Instinct Aura again. So yes, I definitely noticed the reduced rate. But yeah, at least we still can get it. Now for the rewards. I don't really see anything exceptional. But a 267k value? That's actually not bad at all. It's definitely better than the average. But like I said, there's nothing special and I do have re-roll. It's such a tough decision. You know what, let's just keep it. Let's save that re-roll for when we really need it. For once I got into a team really fast. If only the kill went as well. Because it really didn't this time. I'm not sure what was going on. But one of the pets was left to roam free. The pet tank must have not been doing his job very well. Or maybe he died. It sure makes this fight hella tough. The damage I take is massive. But hey, I managed to survive. And that in just voids. Yeah, I'm kinda impressed. And when it comes to the rewards, I rerolled again. The reroll doesn't look that super. I do like the amount of techie I got. You know, sometimes I get about 700, so 1300 is a lot better. And it brings me closer to the abilities. That's the most important part. Whoa, did you see that? 3.4k damage from a swipe attack. It may not seem much, but I already killed Araxi 10 times. So that's a base in rage of 200%. Even at half that in rage, that could mean instant death. So yeah, I got really lucky here. Extremely lucky even. If I had the same kind of luck looting Araxi's corpse, I would definitely find the fang. Okay, dead. And again, it's due to ability queuing. It just pins you to the floor. You know, it happened before. And I bet on my yellow pee hat that it'll happen again. Also, I wasn't as lucky as last time. But yeah, you can't hit the jackpot every day. And I don't want to summon another yak today, so I'm calling it quits. Still, I got like 12 kills, that's pretty good. So I nearly broke my record. Cause you know, I still had a lot of food left. I'm sure I would have beaten Araxi. Breaking that record or attempting to break that record, we'll have to wait another week. I'm sure not trying it when the main path is open. Anyway, I got some coins today. Again, a nice amount of herbs and runite ore. That's all good stuff. But a Triskelion Fragment and Serenic Scales, that's the best of today. Air route on wave 1. That's what you call an unlucky start. And look at that, I even forgot to set a spell. I can't forget about reaching level 20. That's out of the question now. Or I'll need to get nothing but Muspa. But I don't see that happening. Wave 8 and Air route appear. Now that's a better timing for them to spawn. Well... Any wave is better than wave 1. Just look how fast they go down when you have a bit of adrenaline to start with. So close to completing 18 waves. Only 74 damage. Isn't that bad luck? I swear, if I set my spells at the start, I would have had it. I did expect that it wouldn't go well. Some rune items. A half key? That's pretty good. But of course that hard clue is the best of all. Again, I'm not too sure what to think of this clue. The value isn't great at all. But that Zamorak Coif is nice. At least I don't have to worry about whether to reroll or not. Time for the Easter event. Oh, some people could almost take offense to this. Yes, almost. Good thing the S comes to the rescue. The first puzzle, the one with the conveyor belt. That took me like 15 minutes. I needed 2 minutes to do that puzzle, but like 13 to find those levers. See that's the hardest part of the puzzles in RS. 
It's finding out how to actually start the puzzle. The second is a sliding puzzle. I've done loads of treasure trails, so for me that's no problem at all. While the image is a bit harder than a corporeal beast or the king black dragon, it's pretty easy. Especially with the hints. Puzzle 3, well that's one I haven't seen before. Although it does kind of remind me of the forest temple in Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. I didn't really like that temple. But hey, at least that's no water temple. Well, I'm definitely not used to the upside down parts. It kind of makes me sick too. I guess this is how people must feel in Australia. Yeah, I didn't figure out how to properly do this puzzle. I just did whatever. And yeah, it worked anyway, so it doesn't matter anymore. Now, this puzzle requires a bit more thought. Once again, it took me like 5 minutes to find out how to start this puzzle. But yeah, I do love it, because you know, it's a bit more challenging than the others. I'd love to see more of this puzzle in some way. Okay, a puzzle like in the Sorcerer's Garden. Bots used to be really good at those, but I for one hate them. So yeah, of course I get caught plenty of times. Also, I kind of made it harder for myself, apparently. I thought at first you need to get past the possessed winners. All of them, I mean. And then that part of the quest would be over. But apparently you can take them out one by one. You just go to the nearest shelf, take some white chocolates, and toss it at them. So yeah, I had no reason to hate this puzzle. It's like a thousand times simpler than the Sorcerer's Garden. It's apparently not enough that I make skills for myself harder in RS, but puzzles too. Honestly, I don't mind at all. It was fun getting past them. And that takes care of Sliske and the Chocolate Factory. And as I said in another video, I didn't read the book yet or see the movie on which this event was based. So obviously I mean Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And someone was shocked because of this. But yeah, I do know the Oompa Loompas. So you gotta give me credit for that. They're famous, I know, but yeah. Anyway, I think it's pretty cool that the Bears Brothers Bobbleheads take the place of the Oompa Loompas here. While well, Bobbleheads or Bobble Numskulls, as Sliske says. So yeah, that's definitely a nice piece of detail. Also, I think the opening cutscene was great. Usually, I hate singing stuff, but Jagex always seems to do this right. So, maybe Jagex should make a musical. That could be the first musical I actually enjoy. Honestly, I did kind of expect to see more cutscenes like that throughout the events. But yeah, too bad it's only in the beginning. All in all, I think it's just a great holiday event. And this is exactly how a holiday event should be. You know, a nice quest with great puzzles and great jokes. I actually think this could be one of my favorite Easter events. So definitely a great job by Jagex. And the emote looks amazing as well. And the Gobstubber isn't what I guessed it would be. Obviously. So it's basically a candy that has multiple layers of color. So if you lick off one layer, the candy will have a completely different color. In Dutch they call it Toverball, or Magic Ball. I wonder where the name Gobstopper comes from. Also, I wonder, how many licks does it take to get to the center of the... And what'll happen? So yeah, there's one more reward, and that's the component packs. Getting the first one, that was easy. You just click on the machine to disassemble. Fortunately, it doesn't give invention XP. Anyway, the second pack is a bit more tricky. It requires you to go back to Terra and to complete another sliding puzzle. But not just another sliding puzzle. It's one of a completely different level. And this is the very first time I've seen something the likes of it. And it's great that it has many of the same tiles. And it even has animation. So you need to let the animation play out to actually know which piece goes where. So you can solely rely on the hint. But yeah, I love this puzzle. I absolutely do. I want more of these, so I hope they come out with a new level of treasure trails. A level that's even greater than Elite. What would you call it by the way? Mega Clue Scrolls? Ultra Clue Scrolls? Leave your thoughts of this in the comments. I really want to know what you think. I've got my three component packs right here, and let's see what it gives me. 
I believe that's a hefty amount of components. Especially from the second bag. But yeah, that makes perfect sense. For that one you had to complete a puzzle after all. And may I remind you that that puzzle was awesome. It's the greatest sliding puzzle that I've ever done. Yeah, I love it a lot if you haven't figured that out. How awesome the amount of components is, I really don't know. I'm only level 9 invention, what do I know? But I do know that I'll come in useful. One day. Spider leg top, that's exactly what I need. Well, a fang still would have been better, of course. At least now I can complete my fifth leg though. And just as I explained in the last episode, I'll turn this one into a noxious longbow. And as if that top leg wasn't enough, I also got onyx bolts. So this is a fantastic kill, but sadly no fantastic kill. And so after 878 kills, I've been able to complete 5 full legs. I believe that's not the greatest RNG. 5 Arexic kills done today, and it's great to finally see an exclusive drop on that list again. It's been way too long. Also the Hydrix Bolt tips and the Onyx Bolts are amazing drops to get. So I guess it's been a good day. Oh dear, there goes the base tank. And judging by the bones on the floor, he's not the first to die. I fear for this kill. Well, the base tank wasn't the first to die. And he's not the last either. Just look at the guy who's using melee. I mean praying arranged when you're in the vicinity of Durzak. That's asking for trouble if you ask me. Rip, there goes the backup tank. If the kill wasn't tough enough already, it just got a whole lot tougher. But yeah, I do respect that he took over in the first place. And he did a great job. Well, until now that is. And there goes another backup tank. What is going on here? And he got hit 10k through melee protection prayers? Wow, just wow. I've never seen something like this at Durzak before. I really need to go over the Durzak tanking procedure again. I really wonder what he did wrong. Or is it something we did? Also, massive respect to the guy taking over immediately. Durzak was coming for me, but luckily thanks to his quick voking skills he didn't land a hit on me. I probably would have died. I mean, I am wearing just void. Well look at that, the fourth tank pulled us through. He's one of the four survivors. And so am I. After such a tough fight, I'm really proud of that. And that in void. My void must be impenetrable. Well, this time at least. We've seen other instances. So yeah, I rerolled cause of no exclusives. And once again I'm glad I did. Cause I got Ecto Tempest boots. This kill couldn't have ended in a better way. And this is my first ever raids armor piece. I've got quite a nice amount of herbs here at Araxi. Loving the Hydrix bolt tips as well. And 320 onyx bolts. Wow, that's very good. Also, that's from 8 Araxi kills. I haven't done the clue from the skeletal horror yet, so let's go do that right now. I'm seeing that 113k. That makes me instantly want to reroll it. Still, I'm not super pleased with the reroll. There's not really an item I like. But the value is 255k. That is nice, actually. So yeah, the reroll is a success. Let's immediately check the reward from that aquarium clue as well. Royal dragon hides, dwarf weed seeds. I think that's pretty good. An ancient body as well. That makes it only better. So yeah, I'm pleased with this one. That's not the greatest loot I've ever gotten. But let's look at the bright sides. Because those runite ore and rune play bodies aren't too bad. And then there's that Triskelion fragment. Now I forgot why I was even complaining. This actually isn't so bad. And yeah, that's from 5 kills. And after getting a Triskelion fragment from Araxi, let's go use some Triskelions. Well, that's a charming reward. Sorry about that, guys. But yeah, those charms aren't really worth a lot to me. I already have loads of them. And I really mean loads. So this wasn't really the reward I was looking for. Let's hope that clue is better. Let's see. Royal Dragon Heights. Prayer Potions. I consider those useful items. 
and Armadil Platelex. Even though this reward is sub 200k, I still really like it. Honestly, I prefer that one over the reward that was worth 255k earlier. Let's do another Triskillion, I'm feeling lucky. Again 3 seeds. 3 out of the 5 Triskillions I've opened in the last 2 weeks have all been this reward. Honestly, I expected more variation. Though I'm not really complaining. Cause it's not a bad reward, let's be honest. Let's see what I get. Ooh, a penguin staff. That's not too bad. But the reward value is only 174k. I could re-roll. Also, I don't really like the other items. But yeah, then again, a penguin staff. I'm not sure if I have that yet. You know what? I'll keep it and save the re-roll. It may come in handy next time. I made a very good call to not re-roll that previous clue. It turns out that I didn't have that staff yet. It was actually the last staff I needed. So now I own all the animal staves. Yeah, one of the reasons why I like doing clues is because one of my goals is to fill my player owned house reward chest. It'll take a while. And not a single level is complete yet. And I have time for one more Triskelion. Now this is what I'm talking about. This is by far the best reward I've gotten from a Triskelion. The previous have all been around 200k or below. But this one is 440k. So yeah, I'm loving it. And I definitely want more. Let's hope that clue follows the same path. Let's see this one. I'm liking those prayer pots. But that's about it really. I mean, Zamorak arrows. And a 154k value. Let's quickly use that reroll. Another animal staff. This time a bat staff. I'm certain I have this one already. I mean, I just checked. But it's not like I like it less because of that. Also, anti dragon fire potions. And royal dragon heights. Yeah, I'm definitely happy I rerolled. I prefer this by a landslide. Well, not really by a landslide. Let's just say a very, very small landslide. Lately, getting into Durzak teams has been faster. So I guess I must be doing things right? Or perhaps it's just pure luck. I'm liking this evolution. The team that invited me was great again. And the kill went smooth. No problems whatsoever. And to make it even better, I got Acto Primeval Boots. Also, that's the first exclusive drop I get without re-rolling. And a nice detail is that I got back-to-back -back Acto Drops. Alright, a Pheromone! As if today couldn't get any better after getting that Acto Primeval Boots drop. Those coins are a great additional reward as well. Oh yeah, and this drop came at me at kill 898. Look at that lovely Araxite Pheromone. Finally an exclusive again. So yeah, without a doubt that's the best thing I got from Araxi today. So again, no fang. No fang and over 900 kills now. A few months ago I predicted that I wouldn't get a fang before 1k kills. And it's starting to look like that'll be the case. I swear, if I don't get a fang by the time I reach 1k kills, then I'm taking a massive break. I probably won't be doing Araxi for a month then. Or maybe more. Cause that'll be just too much for me to handle. That pet drops are rare. Yeah, I understand that. But something like a fang? Come on, that should be dropped at least within the 500 kills. But yeah, I'm gonna stop ranting now. And the loot you see is from 9 kills, by the way. We're nearing the end of the episode now, so let's go over the important stuff one more time. This week I've gotten two Acto pieces from Durzak. And in the week before that I got a Codex. All these items were dropped in just 9 Durzak kills. Also, for some reason, each time that I want to talk about Durzak, I think about General Grorador. I don't know why. I guess they kind of look similar. Anyway, I've been lucky at Durzak, and hopefully my luck will continue there. Where I haven't been very lucky is at Araxi. 
I'm still missing that one thing. But I talked about that less than a minute ago. I did manage to make my fifth spider leg this week. And this I turn into my third noxious longbow. Next episode the focus will remain on Durzak and Araxi. Let's go for that 1k Araxi kills. As I said previously. But let's hope even more that it doesn't come to that. Thanks for watching and I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you did you could always subscribe. But no one's forcing you. See you all in the next video.